Hi guys, back with a little different video. Uh, so today we will be taking a look and a uh, quick overview of the newest and currently the only uh, CPU container that is anymore available at KimpingCooling.com. This is the last revision of the Kimping Cooling uh, T-Rex CPU container that is meant for both uh, dry ice and liquid nitrogen. It is a huge uh, block of copper, as you can see. It weighs a uh, little over 2.8 uh, kilograms and it is heavily machined from the top side of the container all over the base to max out the surface area that the liquid nitrogen is cooling and thus it offers a nice balance between mass and surface area. Uh, as with uh, LM2 containers, as you probably know from uh, let's say uh, build source videos already, you want both a lot of mass and you want a lot of surface area. Uh, mass is very important when you have a CPU that has very uh, uh, strict uh, uh, cold bug to really uh, control the temperature around the cold bug temperature and uh, you want a lot of surface area so that the pot can really uh, uh, quickly react to any LM2 that is poured into the pot and surface area is also very important with CPUs that can run at the maximum temperature of liquid nitrogen uh, so-called full pot to get the best possible uh, delta uh, between idle and load. And T-Rex is a really nice uh, combination of the two. Uh, currently, uh, there aren't that many uh, uh, realistic options on the market when it comes to uh, CPU containers. Uh, currently, there is pretty much only uh, uh, Kimpin and De Bauer uh, who produce uh, uh, pots like this in uh, real uh, quantities. Uh, we have seen a few other options along the way during the years, but currently those two are pretty much the only options on the market at the moment. Uh, uh, the long-living uh, uh, F1 container as well as the uh, Venom CPU pot from uh, Kimpin are pretty much discontinued now. And the T-Rex is pretty much the combination of the two, as it is wiser to uh, focus on one proper CPU pot uh, rather than have uh, three different options on the market. The uh, T-Rex has the great temperature control of the uh, F1 Dark and at the same time has the great uh, full pot capabilities of the uh, Venom CPU container and uh, the T-Rex is pretty much a taller version of the uh, Venom container. It has nearly the same uh, dimensions as the uh, Venom did. The uh, top piece I have uh, for the T-Rex is identical as on the uh, uh, Venom container. The uh, retail version that you can purchase has a little bit different top version but of course that doesn't have a, uh, an impact on the performance. It just has better compa compatibility with the uh, some of the new platforms like the Threadripper platform. The uh, retail version that you can purchase is of course uh, uh, nickel plated. The uh, nickel plating is kind of a two-sided uh, thing when we talk about uh, LN2 containers. The main thing that it does, it gives the uh, pot a nicer look as uh, copper itself tends to oxidize really really quickly and that gives the uh, uh, container kind of bad look. So uh, the nickel plating is there just to uh, uh, maintain the uh, look like new for long periods of time but also the uh, nickel plating does have a negative uh, side effect it will uh, technically lower your uh, uh, thermal performance as nickel itself has lower thermal conductivity than uh, copper does and also uh, the uh, coating tends to be quite thick as well when it comes to uh, uh, the more standard electrolytic uh, coating and also that more standard one often tends to build up uh, nickel on the edges and uh, sharp corners on the object so it can also make the uh, key uh, surfaces a little bit uneven especially uh, the uh, bottom so it does have some uh, thermal performance risk but it is still uh, often added the uh, pricing of this container is a bit high but it also is uh, quite uh, uh, good compared to some of the other options on the market. The 
price for the T-Rex is at the moment around uh, 320 to 330 US dollars at kimpingcooling.com but there's also a nice uh, deal for the T-Rex plus an Inferno backplate for 400 US dollars in total the uh, for comparison the uh, Debauer Beast container that I have been using for two and a half years it costs 500 euros so it is significantly more expensive than the uh, T-Rex here uh, Debauer also has even more improved pot than the uh, uh, Beast uh, he is a TR pot that is meant for uh, uh, full, full pot and high core monsters like the uh, X299 and uh, Threadripper that pot is even more expensive, it is somewhere between 500 and 1000 euros but you have to remember that those two pots will not give you a better result pretty much than uh, this pot here so uh, this pot uh, has much better uh, value than the uh, uh, Debauer's two highest pots but there is actually a real need why we need uh, more stronger CPU containers nowadays compared to uh, some of the old pots like the uh, Kimbin Cooling F1 or the uh, like the uh, uh, SF3D uh, pot that was very uh, popular when we go back a few years but those two pots cannot really handle the uh, 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 high core count monsters like the 18 core Intel or the AMD Threadripper well anymore as the uh, pots are uh, a little bit too small for so high load CPUs like that uh, so you can easily get a better result with uh, an improved uh, pot like this compared to the F1 if you try to max out your let's say 7980XE or the uh, temperature uh, variance if you try to max out an 18 core with the F1 it is uh, quite hard to keep the uh, uh, temp temperature of the container within a few degrees than it is with a CPU pot like this uh, also the uh, mounting gear was a little bit improved for this container uh, mainly the uh, uh, thumb nuts are much uh, larger now than before so you can uh, tighten the container against the uh, CPU pot I mean against the CPU much tighter than before so it is a little addition there as well the uh, uh, as we have uh, many different types of CPUs now on the market with different sized uh, uh, heat spreaders like the uh, ranging from Intel mainstream CPUs like 9900K all the way to AMD Threadripper which has a huge IHS we pretty much need a container nowadays that has very large uh, base like the T-Rex has if you really want to accommodate all of the CPUs that are on the market uh, if you remember let's say the uh, EKS 3D uh, inflection point uh, CPU pot that only has let's say uh, uh, four centimeters wide uh, diameter base that CPU pot is really not uh, valid anymore nowadays with uh, uh, CPUs like the N Intel X299 or the AMD Threadripper you cannot reach as good result with a pot like that compared to a pot like the T-Rex or the uh, Debauer's highest end options uh, so uh, that's one of the biggest improvements when we talk about these new pots they have these have much larger uh, base area uh, compared to some of the uh, old models uh, uh, if you are going to if you have any plans to uh, try uh, LN2 overclocking and you are going to test let's say uh, new CPUs like the 1900K or the uh, high core count monsters like the Intel X299 or AMD Threadripper this would be the pot I would choose for now since this is of course much cheaper than the uh, Debauer's options but Debauer's options aren't always uh, available you have to remember that and uh, those will not give you much better or pretty much not any better result than this and the uh, 400 US dollar uh, bundle at KPC is actually quite good as the uh, Inferno backplate is very useful it will uh, make your uh, sessions much easier and safer when the uh, cold does not uh, expand so much from the uh, uh, CPU socket uh, yeah expect to see some material from me with this, uh, with, uh, this uh, pot here 
I really like this uh, design. I will be testing this a lot in, in, a, in a short while with both uh, 9900K and uh, the Intel X299. So uh, and I really have uh, plans to make this my uh, uh, main CPU pot. I, I do like the Dear Bauer Beast, but uh, this feels like a better uh, container when it comes to pure uh, temperature control in some cases. I do like how fast the uh, beast is in uh, uh, ambient temperature levels, but that is not really uh, the most important point. And of course, the Debauer Beast is very expensive. It is, it is probably out of the reach for many people's wallets. So uh, this is a much uh, cheaper option. Uh, but yeah, the uh, this pot is of course very huge, but it is very compatible. It is compatible even with some uh, old platforms like 775 or x58. Uh, as it is so huge, it is not so easy to insulate uh, compared to some of the uh, older, more simple pots. And I will show you how uh, this looks like when mounted on a motherboard and uh, some ideas about uh, how to insulate it. Right, here you can see the uh, T-Rex pot mounted on a motherboard. The uh, pot is really really tall as you can see when combined with the uh, aluminium uh, extension. The uh, large thumb nuts, I actually really like them as it is really uh, easy to crank uh, the pot tight down against the CPU. The uh, temperature is measured just at the base of the CPU pot. There is a hole for your uh, K-type uh, thermocouple probe which I forgot to show uh, in, uh, in the start of this video. Uh, but it is measured just at the base, so near the heat source, which is the CPU in our case. Uh, uh, now, one important thing, which I already mentioned uh, uh, earlier on in this video, is that since the pot is so huge, it is not so straightforward to insulate it and the surrounding uh, motherboard area. Uh, as you can see here, the uh, gap between the uh, mounting rods and the actual pot itself is really, really tight. So if you want to get uh, direct in insulation uh, around the uh, CPU pot, the only really working solution is to use uh, uh, three millimeters thick uh, closed cell foam uh, insulation tape. Uh, that will fit between the uh, uh, rods and the pot itself. As you can see in my example here, I have it already uh, uh, around the uh, aluminium extension, but not around the uh, actual pot, uh, pot itself yet. Uh, one huge word of caution here. The uh, glue on these insulation tapes is really, really tough. So once you put it around the CPU pot, it is almost impossible to remove it uh, afterwards without tearing it uh, apart and, and the pieces. And it is a huge mess when you try to clean the uh, pot after doing that. So my tip is to use uh, just normal uh, electrical tape around the uh, uh, CPU pot first, as you can see in my example here, and then put your uh, uh, insulation tape around the uh, electrical tape. So if you have to remove the uh, insulation at some point, it is really easy to do when you can just rip off the uh, uh, electrical tape, and uh, it is a, then and it is then a fairly uh, fast and easy process to do. Uh, once you have it uh, mounted like this, you can then put uh, another layer of Alaflex around the whole uh, uh, thing, so around the pot and the rods, but you have, of course you have to do it before uh, pressing the pot down, I mean the, uh, the uh, aluminium extension, or you can just use uh, uh, many uh, layers of just paper towel, which would be easier. Uh, one uh, important thing, since uh, the memory slots on these high-end overclocking motherboards are often very, very close to the CPU, you have to make sure that your insulation is not too thick uh, here, so that it could push the uh, memory dims to the side here. Uh, if it does that, it can cause huge issues during your uh, overclocking session. It can cause weird crashes, or even it can even uh, uh, prevent uh, achieving uh, high DRAM speeds. 
So uh, you have to make sure that your insulation is not too tight. So uh, my recommendation with this pot would be to uh, do like I have here. So just using the uh, three millimeters thick uh, uh, insulation tape and then just putting uh, many layers of uh, paper around the uh, pot and the rods. And of course have your normal uh, uh, insulation around on the uh, uh, around the socket area first before you even uh, <laughs> mount the pot of course. And that way it shouldn't uh, touch the uh, memory dims at all and it, you should be fine. Uh, but I do like this pot uh, in general. Uh, if you ask me about uh, liquid nitrogen pots uh, uh, overall, I think you should be getting a proper one uh, straight from the start as uh, these can be uh, quite expensive and if you constantly upgrade your uh, LN2 pots you don't really get that much uh, improvement over the uh, previous one and you can waste uh, a lot of money in the process. Uh, of course uh, LN2 pots seem to be some kind of uh, collector items to some people but if you ask me it is best to invest some money and get a good one uh, straight from the start and enjoy it for many years to come. Uh, of course the uh, base quality uh, will decline over the years from use when you do multiple mounts with many uh, loads of different hardware but you can of course fix that uh, at some point uh, by uh, uh, lapping uh, the CPU pot and then it will be uh, almost the same as new. But I really like the T-Rex. Uh, when looking at the uh, market situation at the moment as there aren't really uh, that many uh, manufacturers out there that produce these uh, pots in uh, real quantities. I think the uh, T-Rex is the best way to go right now. Uh, mostly because the uh, best pots from uh, uh, De Bauer, like I mean the Beast and the uh, TR pot, they were always uh, produced in uh, limited quantities. So it's not really easy to uh, even obtain one. And of course they are they are well they are not cheap that is the truth uh, so you can get the same level of performance of either of those pots for quite good money from a, a kimping cooling uh, uh, especially if you ha have any uh, interest on the uh, inferno backplate as well i think the uh, combo deal so the t-rex plus the inferno backplate for uh, 400 us dollars at kpc.com i think that deal is uh, quite good uh, but other than that there's not really uh, that much uh, about LN2 pots in general uh, but uh, if you like this video please of course uh, uh, like and share it and if you have any questions or comments about this uh, uh, pot please uh, feel free to uh, write down below uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, watching this uh, little uh, overview and uh, see you next time